Hello and welcome. Some of you asked me to take a look at DCA, dollar cost averaging, in specific with cryptos. I think this is an interesting topic and I'm planning building a dashboard where you can compare different cryptos in terms of dollar cost averaging. So please leave a like if you're interested in that. So DCA, what is it? I found this from Binance and this is summarizing it quite nicely. So you have the lump sum strategy, which is simply investing a certain investment amount in this case 800 US dollar, into an asset which is worth 10 US dollar. After some time you evaluate how much your investment is worth. So in this example your asset is still worth 10 US dollar. So your overall investment is still worth 800 US dollar. So you have 0% return. With the DCA strategy you split your investment amount and invest a share of this amount, so in this case 100 US dollar. But you are investing it multiple times, here, 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 here and so on. In this case 8 times overall. With that, at least here in this example, you are getting a better average buy price. And overall made more than 20% profit. Something you bought for 816 is now worth 10 US dollar. Quite nice in theory, but let's analyze that more in depth moving over to the coding part. All right, let's get started. Quick disclaimer in this video, we are just prototyping. For the dashboard video, we will need some code refactoring, putting stuff in functions, and so on. So the code here will be quick and dirty. We need pandas for data handling and why finance to pull crypto prices from the internet. Disclaimer here, for the dashboard video we will need the Binance API as it just contains more cryptocurrencies here. So why finance contains the main cryptocurrencies. So we will need the Binance API for the follow up video. For now why finance is sufficient and we are just downloading price data for the Bitcoin and we are starting in the beginning of 2021 as an example. Ending up with a data frame like this containing daily price data for the Bitcoin. Now in the next step we need an array of buy dates. So you can define them manually but Pandas has a pretty nice function for that which I was also using in one of my or ma many of my previous videos which is the date range function which is just putting out an array of dates with, with a certain starting and ending date and a frequency. So in this case I'm just pulling a date range starting at the very first date here of this data frame. So I'm just taking the very first index and the very last index here. So this is my date range and I'm setting the frequency to one month. And you will see that I'm getting an array containing dates with a distance of one month, right? And I'm storing that in buy dates. Next, we need the buy prices. So we need the buy price on each of those dates here. And to do that, we simply pull the close price on those dates here, right? And we can do that by checking the index of our data frame, of our data frame containing the close price where the index is in my buy dates. And with that we are getting this uh, boolean uh, mask here and then we can index for that and you will see that I'm getting only those rows uh, in the buy dates array here. You see it here, right? And here I can just screen for the close price on this date. So the assumption is I'm always buying on the close price on a buying date. And with that I have my buy prices as you see here on the buy dates. And I'm simply storing that as buy prices. Okay, and now I need to know how many Bitcoin I buy on these buy dates, right? And for cryptocurrencies it's very much straightforward because you don't have to worry about 
can I pay one share? Can I pay two shares or something like that? You can just pay any uh, multiple of, of Bitcoin with some uh, restrictions like uh, um, a minimum notional value you have to buy. But we are disregarding it here. So I'm simply taking my investment amount. In this case, I'm just assuming I invest 500 each month and I divide it by the buy price. So with that, I can buy uh, 0.01 something Bitcoins on the first buying date and so on. I'm storing that as Bitcoin amount. So just uh, as a side note for what I said some seconds ago, in some cases you have a minimum notional and I've covered them in some of my Binance videos where you have to um, yeah, define, you have to cut off, let's say, two uh, decimals here because the minimum notional has uh, this, this amount, 0 0.0001. But in this case, it won't be making a big difference. And for Bitcoin, uh, this is an amount you can actually buy. So just that you have that on your, on your, um, on your mind. Okay, so these are my Bitcoin amounts I can buy every month, right? And what, what are we doing as well is to take a look at the Bitcoin amount we can buy using the lump sum approach, right? So I'm calling that Bitcoin amount LS for lump sum. And this is quite straightforward. So I know that I'm investing 500 each month here, right? So overall, I'm investing 500 times the length of this Bitcoin or this buy prices uh, array. So I can simply take 500 times the length of the buy prices because this is the uh, amount of times I'm buying here. So overall, I invested 11, a uh, thousand five hundred US dollar. So I, I take 500 times the length of the buy prices. So of course this has to be flexible later on, right? So this is your investment amount. But in this case, I'm just keeping it 500, 500 times the length of the buy prices divided by the very first buy price, because this is uh, the amount of money I'm investing one single time. So in the very first slide, I've shown you the approach that would be the 800 US dollar. So I'm simply taking this 11.5 grand and uh, put it into the Bitcoin taking this price here. Okay. So divided by buy prices and then just screen for the very first buy price. So my Bitcoin amount lump sum here is just this uh, number and it tells me I could buy 0 0.3 something uh, Bitcoin with my 11.5 grand in the beginning. And this won't change until the last day. So I'm just evaluating what is 0 0.39 Bitcoin worth in the end. Now let's go back to the Bitcoin amount with the DCA approach. Now for the Bitcoin amount with the DCA approach, we have to accumulate those Bitcoin amounts because on this date, I have 0 0.01 Bitcoin. On this date, I bought additional 0 0.015 Bitcoin. So I need to know how much Bitcoin I have overall on this date. So I'm accumulating the sum of this array to find that out, to see how much Bitcoin I have on every single date. And also, of course, in the very end here. So to do that, I'm just calling that Bitcoin amount sum. Use my Bitcoin amount and take the cumulative sum. And don't mess up the variable names here. Bitcoin AMT. Interesting. Am I blind? Didn't I execute that? 
sorry. So with that, I'm getting the Bitcoin amount sum. So here you see on this date, I have um, accumulated 0.03 Bitcoin on this date, 0.04. And finally, I got 0.33 Bitcoin uh, at the very last date. And now we need to do some um, data manipulations. And let me quickly show you uh, why I'm doing the following steps. So when you consider your initial data frame, you see that you're getting daily data here and a close price. And our goal now is to evaluate how much our Bitcoin is worth. So we need to bring together this array, so the Bitcoin amount sum, with the data frame because with that I can see how much is my uh, Bitcoin worth on every single day because over let's say the October here I'm holding 0.311 Bitcoin here right so I have to take the 0.311 Bitcoin and multiply it with the close price in October on every single day to see what my portfolio is worth and then on the end of October, I'm taking 0.33 Bitcoin and multiply it with the daily price, right? So we have to bring together this array with this data frame. And as you see, the name of this Bitcoin amount sum is currently close, but this column is also named close. So to avoid confusions when bringing those uh, together, I'm just renaming this array here. And I can do so by simply taking Bitcoin amount sum name which is currently close and i'm just setting that to bitcoin amount dca okay and then i'm bringing that together so i'm calling that df together use pandas concat function and then provide my bitcoin amount sum and my data frame and i want to merge those um, two data frames on the date axis with that, let me quickly not assign that to show you what is happening when doing so. With that, I'm getting my Bitcoin amount DCA on those dates here, right? On the first buying date, next one will be on the uh, second buying date. So somewhere uh, end of um, uh, January 2021. And between those, I have NAN values. But I want to have my Bitcoin amount with the DCA approach on every single day because on this day, I still have 0 0.017. So I can use a forward fill for that and fill the 0 0.017 values until my next uh, Bitcoin amount value is uh, showing up. So on the from the second uh, buy date on. So you see here, this number is uh, already um, yeah, known by you because this is simply the very last um, number in my Bitcoin amount sum here, right? Because this is the amount of Bitcoin I accumulated here. And this is in the um, last rows here. Makes sense, right? And yeah, so let's store that as DF together. Don't know of a better name now. And with that, we have basically everything so we have our Bitcoin amount DCA. One thing is missing, our Bitcoin amount lump sum. And I'm simply uh, creating a new column for that lump sum. And I'm assigning that to Bitcoin amount lump sum, which was this single number here, the amount of Bitcoin we bought with our capital 11.5 grand. So with that, we have our final data frame containing our Bitcoin amount DCA and Bitcoin amount lump sum. And now you already see it, right? The Bitcoin amount lump sum is the better approach in this case. You see, we have zero point without calculating the portfolio worth. We have accumulated 0 0.39 Bitcoin. With the DCA approach, we only have accumulated 0 0.33 Bitcoin. And if we are evaluating our portfolio here on this date, so on the most recent date, we have more Bitcoin using the lump sum approach. So of course our portfolio would be worth more using this approach. If you want to 
so you already see lump sum is beating DCA, at least considering Bitcoin starting from 2021 here. Now to calculate your portfolio worth, that's pretty much straightforward. You are taking your uh, Bitcoin amount DCA and simply multiply it with the close price. And with that, you're getting your portfolio worth every single day using the DCA approach. So DF talk close. So you're starting at 500, makes sense, right? And then you take the amount of Bitcoin uh, times the close price. So in the first days, the close price seems to uh, uh, climb. And then on the second buying date, you uh, your portfolio will rise. So I, I will show you in a plot how this is looking like. So you see the development of your portfolio using the DCA approach here, right? So in the last uh, row here, you have your portfolio worth using the DCA approach. And you see that it is worth 7.1K US dollar, right? But now think about how much you invested. You invested 11,500, right? So this was the length of buy prices times the investment amount. You invested 11.5K, uh, 11 which is now worth 7K. So maybe not your best uh, um, bet here, right? So on the other hand, you have your lump sum strategy this is uh, the same here. So you can just take lump sum and you have 8.4K here, right? So in both cases you burned money, but you didn't burn as much money using the lump sum approach. Now, this is of course only a certain time period. So we can take a look at, for instance, how does it look like if uh, you would start your DCA strategy in 2022? execute all this stuff again. Now you see you invested uh, less money, of course, because you have uh, less, less buying dates here. And then you're just executing it all again. And now out of uh, length buy prices times 500. Yeah, of course, this way. Out of 5.5 grand, with the DCA approach, you made 4.1 grand. Not a good good bet here, right? Um, out of 5.5K with the lump sum here, you made 2.5K, so even worth. So in this case, the DCA would have been a good idea, but it didn't make profit here, right? And yeah, so let's maybe take a look at another asset, Dogecoin here. So in this case, you invested 5.5 grand and with the DCA strategy, you would have made 7.3K, right? So that would be a very nice or very good idea. With the lump sum approach, you would have burned money here, right? So you would have made uh, out of 5.5K, you would have made um, 4K, right? So what I want to say or what I want to tell you with this story is, that it depends on the uh, asset and depends on the time horizon. And this is the re reason why I think a dashboard where you c would compare those two things. You, so you would compare, okay, what is my lump sum return? What is my DCA return? And you have it visualized for a picked cryptocurrency. And with that, you can even make some more data analysis, taking a look at, okay, what is actually the best crypto out of the whole Binance universe to use the DCA strategy. So for what assets would it be worth to invest DCA? And what assets would be worth it to use lump sum? And next question is, are there maybe better entries than using DCA strategies, right? But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was interesting. As said, in the next video, you would need to make some refactoring here to make it scalable. And yeah, I'm looking forward for the next video. I think that would be a pretty cool uh, project. So thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming video.
Bye-bye.